2021 proposed highway code changes. How do they affect you? Before I start, I'm just going to say there's no agenda behind this video, so please put your tinfoil away. I'm just here to read through all the guff and condense it so you don't have to. Shall we crack on? Note. None of this detracts from the responsibility of all road users, including pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders, to have regard for their own and other road users' safety. So the basic impetus behind these changes, it would seem, is to make it clear who has the right of way in specific instances, by creating a hierarchy of road users. And here's the clearest explanation of it. In any interaction between road users, those who can cause the greatest harm have the greatest responsibility to reduce the danger or threat they pose to others. If you're in a big old van, you're one of the biggest threats on the road. You're like the T-Rex of the road. <laughs> So how do we stop ourselves from being hunted down and savaged? Here's how. Junctions. When you're approaching a junction, you must give way to pedestrians waiting to cross a road into which, or from which, you are turning. You must not turn into a junction if this would cause a cyclist to stop or swerve. You should give way to cyclists approaching or using cycle tracks that cross junctions. On approaching a junction or road narrowing, cyclists are advised to ride in the centre of the lane if it is unsafe for drivers to overtake. Wait, why does it imply there that it's the cyclist making a decision whether it's unsafe or not? I'd just stay out of that way, to be, to be honest, because it also says that they should act like a car when they get to a junction, so I would just hang back for the whole run-up. Crossings! You must not enter a pedestrian crossing if you're unable to completely clear it in one manoeuvre. You must, in block capitals, MUST give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing and pedestrians or cyclists on a parallel crossing, especially if they have a green signal. And you should give way if they are merely waiting to cross. I'm really not sure what the acceptable conditions are in which you wouldn't though, when they say you should. There's not, there's not really an unless there. It just says you should. Pavements. Don't drive your car on the pavement. Roundabouts. On roundabouts you must give way to cyclists and do not overtake them in their lane. Overtaking. Cyclists must ride in single file when vehicles wish to overtake and it is safe for them to do so. Again, it makes out like the safety of the overtake is, is in the hands of the cyclists, not the vehicle, even though that's the opposite of what they're supposed to be doing here. The hierarchy of responsibility just seems to get more slippery as we go on. Anyway, when overtaking, you must leave a gap of 1.5 metres at under 30 miles per hour, 2 metres at over 30 miles per hour. 2 metres if you're in a large vehicle. Large to who? I don't know. I guess a van. Just do 2 metres every time. 2 metres for horse riders or horse drawn carriages and you must slow down to 15 miles per hour. If it's not safe to keep these distances, then you're going to have to wait mate. And finally, waiting and parking. In order to reduce the number of accidents which occur when people open their doors wildly into the road, a new technique commonly known as Dutch Reach has been introduced. Dutch Reach. This advises road users to open their door with the hand opposite the door in order to safely shift their field of vision from the side mirror that tells them what's behind them to that of the side pillar and seat belts. And on that bombshell we end today's video. Um, it's mostly common sense or just keep your distance or just don't road rage basically but hopefully me reading through all that, that guff and telling you this has saved you some time. But anyway we are Van Life UK, a complete survivor's guide. You can subscribe if you like. See you soon and happy camping.